That is the third of the four meetings between the two old firm giants that he would potentially miss. Former teammate of Paul Murray at Southampton was Scott McDonald, the SPL's top scorer, the match winner the last time these two sides met. And today he hopes to reach 20 league goals in a season for the first time in his career. Plenty to consider in the huddle for the Celtic players. The Gretna, the 210th game since joining the league in 2002. And at one stage, it looked as though that was going to be one more than they would manage. Charlie, uh, sorry, Greg Thompson takes charge today. A lawyer who is one of the fourth officials for Euro 2008. He has produced three red cards in his 13 SPL games this season. play Celtic will it be their last ever match against old firm opposition Mick Wadsworth like the vast majority of his team an Englishman who joined Gretna as director of club development back in 2006 now finds himself as caretaker manager and troubleshooter Yeah, it's typical Scottish weather today, freezing cold, sunny, but snowing. You can see as well, Jim, the, the field straight away, it's bumpy, I know they've watered it. It's probably one of the better fields in Scotland at the moment, but it's still going to be tricky to play football on it. Gordon Strachan. Still hoping to be the first Celtic boss since Jock Steen to win three titles in a row. With three games against Rangers still to come. There is plenty to play for. Here's Robson. Murray to Ryan Baldacino. for Celtic, they've won on each of their last nine visits here. Well, they left it late at Fir Park back in October, they have Gretner on both of the previous meetings, a 3-0 victory at Celtic Park, the last time the two sides met back in December with Scott McDonald on the score sheet that day as well. Here's Henkel. Very important for Celtic to try and get an early goal. The long, longer it goes, nil-nil. The more difficult it will get, the more confidence Gretna will get. That's what happened last time. So much onus as well on Celtic to go and get that first goal. Took an awkward bounce after. Van Gorf Hesselink tried to flick it on. And Scott Brown's had a, had a play for a Gretna throw. Problem is going to be for Celtic. They will struggle to get in behind Gretna. They're sitting very deep, and everything will be played in front of that Gretna defence. That may just take a little moment of brilliance from a Nakamura or a Robson, or maybe a driving run in behind a quick pace from a Brown. And possibly, as we've seen so often this season, a turn and shot from Scott McDonald. But it has to be something a little bit different, I think, to break down Gretna. Venegorov Hesselink and Nakamura and Barry Robson supplying the width and he's kept it in Hinkle in support for him 
good challenge by Baldacino, albeit at the expense of the throw. You can see there, Robson taking responsibility and trying to get that cross in. He could have laid it back to Nakamura or Hinkle. Lovely play by McDonald, teasing it forward for the run of Scott Brown. Osman there to clear, back from Naylor. Murray with a vital foot in, but only as far as Nakamura. Celtic on the front foot and applying the pressure from the very off, as she would have expected. Here's Murray. Brendan McGill. Murray to Baldacino. Nicky Devadix. Bumble with a nice turn and the advantage played by Craig Thompson. Hinkle. Now Caldwell. Naylor, Venegor of Hesseling. Osman tried to make life difficult and succeeding in the end, he's won a free kick after Losman. Oh, I think if Scott McDonald had seen Naylor, who'd continued his run, once he got the layoff from Jan Venegor of Hesseling, he could have just slipped Naylor in there. Gretna will have to continue with five in midfield, just leaving the one up. Try and make it difficult for Celtic in that central area to find any space and then hopefully just nick it and go on a break. That looks to be Charlie. their game plan Charlie. this afternoon. I think Gordon Strachan will have known that though. Well, Greg Fleming has done his boot up. Gordon Strachan uh, just making sure that the he realised that the time had uh, elapsed. And now Benagor wrestling out muscling Hall. Nakamura. And the clearance by Norton just buys Gretner a bit of time. Yeah, and Gretner done a great job of doubling up. We'll have to do it both sides on Nakamura. And also on McGeady. Skelton doesn't normally play left back, and it's going to be a difficult day for him if Greta don't do that. Hinkle. Barry Robson. McGeady with another chance to test youngster Kyle Norton. He has played at left back for the majority of his time at Gretna. He's a right footed defender playing on his uh, preferred side today with Gavin Skelton playing at left back, but having played the last nine or ten games on the left hand side, I would just wonder whether that's going to cause a problem with him getting his bearings. Norton again, he was on loan from Sheffield United. Oh, talking about causing problems to yourself, you look at Gretna, eight minutes gone, sitting so deep, right on top of the penalty area. And that's definitely not the way to go, they have to try and force a higher line, because of course that squeezes the game and leaves Celtic with no room. Gady taking on Norton again. And he's still firm, but at the expense of the first corner of the game. But Manus has made his way forward. Harry Caldwell lurking there as well.
Kimura's first set piece. And it did fall for McManus. Well, McManus does often find himself in these situations. Only bagged three goals a season in 44 starts, and I think there have been one or two in recent weeks. You'd expect better from the central defender, and that either has to go back across goal or be on target. Certainly no signs of an early whitewash here. Caldwell with a free kick for Naylor. Let's have the feel of an attack against defence training session at the moment. Yeah, it does. Waves of attack. Here's a chance. It's a good ball in towards Ben Wilkinson and Caldwell having to come across and cover. Well, I'm just going to say waves of attack, but this is a decent attack from Gretna. And Caldwell, he has to be there. Celtic looking very, very open at the back. Maybe just a little casual. Balacino with Gretna's first corner. Scott Brown that climbed the highest inside his own penalty area. Nakamura steers it away from Murray for another Gretna throw. Celtic with the vast majority of possession in the opening ten minutes or so, just short of three quarters of the play in the opening exchanges. It's the first time that Gretna had been on the front foot. Norton's throw. Way by McManus. Here's McGill. Norton's cross with his weaker left foot. Easy for Boric, who is quick to spot the opportunities ahead of him. Cold run out of Nakamura. McDonald. Trying to tee up Barry Robson. McGill and a foul from Scott Brown that's what John Hartson was talking about before the match Scott Brown he's the player in midfield for Celtic that gets a little bit of dig in there and he is walking that tight rope on the yellow card I don't think it is big a problem for Scott McDonald but he's also a little bit feisty up front Brown has received 12 yellow cards in all competitions this season Hall's free kick. Osman was his target. Cleared out as far as McGeady, who loses out to Devedix. Good play by Lee Naylor. His cross just took McDonald wider than he wanted to go. Nakamura now. Made an uncharted run towards the edge of the penalty area. Back for Naylor who started this attack. Here's McGeady. I've done Hawley. Danny Hall making a vital interception with Benegor of Hesselink lurking in behind it. Celtic trying to learn from that draw at Celtic Park against Dundee United where at times they were laboured going forward. It's a little bit obvious you can see that when they do get the chance to break they're trying to do it quickly. But Gretna back as well very quickly and making it difficult. going to be the key for the champions today but when they do get a bit of space they've got to drive into it quickly the passing has to be sharp and I think once if they can get that first goal they can afford to relax just a little bit more then but initially everything has to be done sharp by Boric. Skelton playing at left-back today, a position that he would have 
played in very few times in his long Gretna career. He's actually playing Gretna's first ever Scottish League game, Gavin Skelton. Long again by Naylor looking for Nakamura who brought it down beautifully. And Skelton forces it back for Hinkle who crosses too deep for Benegor of Hesseling. And Norton can clear. I'm just thinking at times like that, Hinkle's got to be able to pick someone out. He's got all the time in the world to make the cross. <laughs> Devedick's doing well to hold it up. Now Murray to Skelton. So far, so good for Gretna, 15 minutes in, they haven't conceded yet, and the only worry will be, they don't score a lot of goals, only seven goals amongst the 11 players that are on this tack for Gretna. When you take into account that Celtic, every outfield player has already scored this season, it's a massive difference. Nakamura. Gill to Osmond to Murray, good football at close quarters. Scott Brown trying to win it back with a typical Scott Brown challenge. And then Ben Wilkinson coming back, McManus has conceded the free kick. That's good from Wilkinson, though. He's busy up front, trying to win the ball back high up the park. And I think at times, both sides of the old firm this season, they don't do that enough, particularly Celtic, they do allow teams to play a little bit until they get into the last third, I just think at times maybe it'd be better to try and win the ball higher up the park, maybe higher pressing, if we could do that and win the ball in creative situations, it just means they're that bit closer to goal, we don't have to have as many passes to get there. Link's physical presence, but Scott McDonald couldn't take advantage. He's got some week ahead of him, ahead of the Old Firm game next week. He's got a 16-hour plane flight via Bangkok tonight to get to China, where Australia are in a World Cup qualifier, and it's at altitude as well. Could hardly be a more difficult week for the SPL's leading scorer. Yeah, it's very difficult. That's something that has to be done nowadays for a number of players, but I'm sure Gordon Strachan won't be too pleased. In series like these, I think Celtic should be trying to press higher up the park. They're allowing Gretna to get some passes going. Push on Hinkle, it's a Celtic free kick. the bedrock of this Celtic defensive side. Manus started every game this season, and Caldwell has started the last 41. And Lee Naylor hasn't missed too many either, just the six. And that's been a problem position for Celtic when Lee Naylor hasn't played. They've won only one of the six, which he has been absent. Good ball fall from Celtic's Englishman for Nakamura. That's another corner. That was good play. Nice spot from Naylor. Nakamura 
changing position, coming in, mixing it up a little bit. And that's what he'll need to do. He can't just stay out there on the right-hand side. McManus. And cleared eventually by Gavin Skelton. Able to put his foot through the ball and just alleviate the pressure. Lowest ever SPL points total, incidentally, was achieved by Livingston some two seasons ago. They went down with 18 points. Unlikely that Gretna are going to catch that, but I certainly feel that the players would take pride in getting at least one more win, which would take them over the nine point threshold, which they not had the 10 points taken away from administration, would have seen them bypass Livingston's total. Nakamura's free kick, Velagor of Hesselink dropped off to meet it, and Brown's ferocious volley, McManus scuffed it, but Caldwell's kept it in, Velagor of Hesselink coming in the back post, and somehow Saudi can't get the decisive touch from close range. Closest they've come so far. Nice play by Robson. Nakamura. McGeady. Good strike. And Fleming just caught out for a moment. It was a fantastic save in the end. Oh, McGeady, who's not been in the game, you can see again he is doubled up on, but does it so quickly. And that's going top corner. Great save from Greg Fleming. He got there and he had to. Another Nakamura corner, the last one caused problems, this one less so as Caldwell can't hit the target. Good save though by Greg Fleming, he's never kept a clean sheet in his career. Yeah, but he'll have seen this so often this season from McGeady, he knew it was coming. It was a case of guessing right which corner, he did it well because if he lose a goal at this point, it would probably be all over, he's kept his side in it. Single. Yes, yes. Something's away form has been good in the SPL this season. They have dropped only 11 points all season. One in the last five games on the road. Suspicion of a push by Osman, but right in front of the referee who was happy for play to go on. Wilkinson battling and winning the free kick. Again, Scott Brown. Gordon Strachan said, well, it's the players that have got themselves into the situation where they're just on the limit with the yellow cards. And they are going to have to be the ones to deal with it. So far, it's not affected Scott Brown. Still getting stuck in. McDonald with a nice touch. He's got round the front of Norton to feed Aidan McGeady. Good play by Nicky Devedix, who's Started playing off Ben Wilkinson. Good tackle by Wilkinson, but on the insistent referee. That just shows their enthusiasm, willing to tackle anything. I did mention Wilkinson a little bit earlier. Getting stuck in, trying to win the ball back, but it's been a bit far. Ben Wilkinson, who's on loan from Hull, 
made his full debut last weekend, only the second start of his career today. About the field, yes, it has been watered, but still bobbles. That ball makes it difficult to just judge exactly when it's going to bounce as it comes to you. I saw Hinkle there with a, a bit of a problem. And what that also does is it just slows things down a little bit. And for Celtic, who are the, the better passing side, it makes it that bit more difficult. Strachan and Tommy Burns haven't seen their side score in the opening quarter. They've had a couple of near misses, but probably not quite as many concrete chances created as they would have expected. Certainly not as many as they would have liked. Devenick's helping it on. It's McGill that's made the uh, run forward. Hills for handball. Touch on the optimistic side, and here's Skelton. Here's McGill. A little bit of space for Wilkinson. He didn't realise just how much time he had, and then... Reese Bainel has gone through Nakamura. Just wondering if Wilkinson got a shout there to hold it. He did have time. It's not often going to find him in that much room. When it does, he has to make it stick. Nagini and McDonald. Naylor's ball in. Caldwell. Nice pass from Ugidi, another good strong run by the Irishman. Now Lee Naylor. And Hinkle coming in at the far post, but he couldn't get there. Yeah, just a final ball. I'm not sure if that's what Caldwell meant. I think he was trying to pick up Jan Federer of Hessen to start with, but he found Ugidi. The way back came to Naylor. Just sort of float it towards that back post. Just at times, things look a little bit static from Celtic. They're trying to play with a bit of patience. It's worked for the majority of the season, but what it has meant at times is they've had to grind out results very late on. Maybe you should try and just up the tempo a little bit in spells throughout the first half and see if they get some success from that. Is Brown now Hinkle Venegor of Hesseling Hinkle had made the run he was expecting but Osman got in the way and Robson pushed over by Baldacino yeah, again Gretna very very deep and that just causes so many problems it means the ball's bobbling about and there are so many players in the same area it's hard to clear your lines just need someone to take a little bit of responsibility and push the whole side up. It might have to be him. So many times, Shinsi Nakamura has delivered. Not this time. Though. Not enough pace. And not enough accuracy either. Looking for the ball just to bounce before Fleming. And that's the right idea, but more pace and direction needed.
Arsenal's hoping to shepherd the ball back out of play for a throw, and it did go over the line. It will be another Gretna put in. He's certainly done his reputation no harm with his lone spell in the SPL. Callum Morton, who's just playing for the Blades Academy side at Sheffield United before making the lone move north. Four games left for Celtic before the split, two against Rangers, two against Motherwell. The next one at Ibrox, you can see it, Saturday, 11.30 on Satanda Sports 1. Look at this game again, I've seen it so often from Celtic this season. I think Gordon Strachan has mentioned once or twice he's looking for more goals from other areas, particularly I think central midfield. That's maybe why Robson got the, the nod today. Certainly, Scott Brown hasn't scored nearly enough. Two central defenders as well. I think it's been five between them. They've played a lot of matches this season. Someone really needs to take that extra bit of responsibility. It can't always be down to Jan Federer of Hesslink and Scott McDonald. Brown, Robson, Hinkle making a strong run on the overlap for him. Skelton blocked the cross from the German. And then defending well again, Gavin Skelton. Well, they might be 100 miles from home, but I'm delighted to say the drum has found its way to Almond Vale. by Robson may have got a nod for his goals so far he's finding it difficult as Paul Hartley did when he played in that role to try and get in positions to score goals good play by Ben Wilkinson McGill dropping off and here is Brendan McGill good challenge by McManus a few of the Gretna fans are appealing that he might have handled that A Celtic free kick, but that was Gretna's best moment of the game so far. Yes, yeah, good play from Wilkinson driving in there. It's just a, a shout that this hits McManus on his right arm, but if you know anything about it, couldn't see the ball. to play here, Greg Fleming, he was signed by Gretna from Livingston. Osman. Maynard kept it in. Oh, Gordon Strachan thought it was a Celtic throw, so did Hinkle. It has been given the other way. You need to tidy your game up. You need to tidy your game up. You tidy well, you can hear that very clearly. Gordon Strachan having a go at Scott McDonald, suggesting that he needs to tidy his game up a little bit. I think that's just the ball's not sticking up front as the manager would like. Benagor of Hesselink having his shirt pulled by Skeldon, but he still won it. McDonald now making his way forward. McGeady. Benagor of Hesselink trying to get round the back, but the positioning of Gavin Skeldon was all important. Wants to clear this up. 
last break from Gretna. But doesn't touch anywhere near. Touch McManus's arm. Quite interesting the Gordon strike and having a little go to strike because I think it's a wee bit of frustration. I think he wanted a sharper performance today from his side. Now Miguel, plenty of options for him in the centre, but he's pulled it back behind all three of them. Now Robson. Nakamura. Well, that won't go down well with the manager. It's exactly what he doesn't want to see. Exactly what he was asking for. Needs to stick for Celtic, and it's not at the moment. And I think the biggest fear for them today, it has to be said, is complacency. And so far, there has been a wee tinge of that. But you've also got to give Gretna credit. They've gone for it at times. They try to push forward and create stuff. You can see Samaras there getting a little nod to go and just shake his legs. with the throw. Robson. Murray. Baracino. Now Osman with plenty of space for Kyle Norton. Baracino comes to meet it. Cleared though by McManus. Gretna have grown in confidence as time has gone on. They've had, I think, as many possibilities as Celtic have. And here's the yellow card that he dreaded seeing today. Scott Brown's 13th caution of the season, and that almost certainly is a suspension. 13th caution, third tackle. It's the third time that Gretna have got a foul off the back of one of his tackles. And see it was coming very difficult for a player like Scott Brown to hold back will they rue that the Celtic side Hall's free kick cleared now Naylor tight, tight. and here's Robson Use the run of Hinkle as a decoy. Beaten away by Fleming. Venegorov Hesseling. Now McGeady. Brown comes to meet it, but heads over the bar. Robson getting a little bit of space. And then, as usual, great strike. McGeady coming inside. It's a little floating pass that Scott Brown, a late time run, but. There's no back lifted at all from Barry Robson, but you can see by Fleming's reaction the power that was in it. His hole. Norton. Skelton trying to keep it in. Nick Wadsworth driving his players back. That yellow card for Scott Brown means that he is still eligible for next week's old firm game. We anticipate a three match suspension we'll start a week on Saturday for the trip to Motherwell. And he will miss, that will be the first of three games he misses, which will take in one and possibly two matches against Rangers, almost certainly just the one exactly what we talked about before the match. Has there been an over-reliance from Gordon Strachan on certain players? Should have he made the change today? Maybe not just with Brown, but also McDonald. And if 
others had been brought in throughout the season, would they be on the threshold? That's the question. Gordon Strachan did strengthen in January and brought in players, but Barry Robson, Sam Riss, Ben Hutchison, they really haven't played. But they might have to in the next three or four weeks. Massive old firm showdowns to come. These are the players that he may have to call on. Five minutes before half time. And still no way through for Celtic. central position this time here's Brown Hinkle's outside him time to measure the cross this time towards Jan Venegor of Heselinki Van Hall and Norton too difficult a combination to be able to navigate and it's a goal kick yeah Hall in particular has done a great job on the big Dutchman in this first half and I think it's been a nervy first half from Celtic Tad complacent at times as well. From a Gretna point of view, they'll be very happy. It's a stronger side than we first thought it might have been on this field today. Certainly not full strength by any means. There's Hall again. And Boric got there in time. on to McDonald, Jan Venegor of Hesseling sets up Scott McDonald, the breakthrough comes three minutes before half-time, has a bit of vintage Celtic performance, but they get their noses in front and that is all that matters. What they do is, they wait for the opposition to switch off and that's what Greta did, it's the long high ball, you can see there, definitely not offside, Scott McDonald holds his line really well, in typical style for this season and he coasts in and that is composed side foot Fleming no chance he gets a hand to it and that is now 41 goals for that partnership this season it really works 20th SPL goal of the season for Scott McDonald the first man this season to reach that mark 26 for him in all competitions first in six games as well it's a long high ball and this time Hall doesn't get there for the first time and Jan Federer of Hesling, he knows where his striking partner is we spoke about this as well before the game they just get on Jim some you win some you lose Gordon Strachan yep an over-reliance on those front two but they definitely have done it for him he certainly lost out on Scott Brown for a, a game or two but probably prepared for that a risk he thought was worth taking and that changes things a lot now going at half time if it stays this way 1-0 we certainly have to try and up the pace a little bit in the second half trying to get themselves back on level terms just before the break. And they go off Hesling with an important touch in that penalty area now. Gina takes a tumble. Seems to have been pushed by Nakamura. Five 
forward for Gretna. Scott Brown's touch. Back from Murray. Now Robson. Osman. Skelton and Hill just getting each other's way for a moment. It's Balacino now. Murray. Balacino just couldn't quite keep it in. to be added on at the end of this first half. Team taught that Gordon Strachan will deliver has changed drastically, I would imagine, in the last three or four minutes. And Robs has won the free kick. It was interesting that Gordon Strachan was telling Scott McDonald to tidy things up a little bit earlier on. Well, that was tidy enough in front of goal, wasn't it? Hoping for some daylight in the first half stoppage time. Nakamura's ball in. Oh, it was a free header as well. The one that Jan van Aguro of Hesseling couldn't capitalise on. Oh, it's a great ball in. He's just picked out Jan van Aguro of Hesseling. He's up so early. Beats Osman to it. Just can't beat the inside of the post. Wilkinson, nice turn by Alicino. Showed too much of it to Robson, now Nakamura. First half, Benagor of Hesselink unable to turn past Hall. And the half-time whistle goes with Scott McDonald's goal. The difference between the two sides is 20th in the SPL this season, giving Celtic the advantage in a game, which they certainly haven't found as easy as perhaps some anticipated. But he was there to capitalise on the touch from Jan Benagor of Hesselink. And Scott McDonald's goal, giving Celtic the half-time advantage here at Holman Vale against the brave, resilient Gretna side. At the break, Gretna nil, Celtic one. Yeah, they could, but I think the longer it stays 1-0, uh, Gordon may be a little bit cautious and, and keep things the way they are, but I think if Celtic get the next goal and go 2-0, I think you might see Hartley, Samaras, ride, and I think Gordon then, he may bring one or two off, rest their legs for next week, and have a look at Hartley, have a look at Samaras, give them a little bit of a run, but Celtic need to go get that second goal. 1-0 Celtic, back to Scott Booth, back to Jim Proudfoot. Thank you, Rob. Worryingly for Gretna, none of the players that they have here today have scored a goal against Old Firm opposition. Fabian Yantorno scored their goal against Celtic earlier this season. He, of course, is injured, and Kenny Duca was the only player that scored against Rangers this season. And he's now in the States. Somebody, if Gretna are going to get something from this, to do something they've never done before. Naylor just waited for the ball to be returned to him before he can restart play. Benegor of Hesselink. This time it's a great ball. <laughs> McDonald.
Nakamura. Now Brown. Under pressure by Wilkinson and Devadix. Nakamura. McGeady. Robson. Trying to look and see what was on around him, and he swung the corner from Danny Hall. Yeah, the ball just ran away from slightly. It's a good pass, though, from Nakamura. Forward again. Towards no the near post. Got his head on it, but Hall was in the way. Mello wins the throw for Celtic. Back in Europe. McDonald again finding some space. Skelton played the ball into him and it was easy for Fleming after that. Good quick throw from Greg Fleming. And here's Baldacino. And McGill. This time that Boric has had a scramble across his line in the game. I think it's a real chance. I'm not going to get many better than this, Gretna. That's the least. Hit the target, Miguel. You can see he just came through it. Came off the side of his right foot. That meant the contact wasn't great. First strike. On goal. That was a chance. Osman. Asking for the free kick to be taken in the right half of the field. As Danny Hall prepares to do. Hall, who signed from Shrewsbury until the end of the season. Manus with a header away. Back from Skelton. Danny Hall Hesseling can only find McGill. Safely back by Korn, well, at least that was the intention. And Boric couldn't keep it in, and Samaran have a, uh, sorry, Gretna have a cheap corner. Oh, Only for the Celtic Black Four is that Gretna haven't really put them under massive, massive amounts of pressure, but what they have done is they've got bodies up and around the Celtic defence, and when that's been the case, they've looked edgy. They certainly will have to up their game before next weekend. Deep towards Hall, Venegor of Hesseling, able to get it clear. <laughs> Norton with the throw. McGill. Turn McGeady. Robson might be able to launch the counter attack now. Here's McDonald. And good defending again by Danny Hall. Yeah, Celtic not managing to take advantage of the breakaway. Too many players crossing a gut to get forward either. Alongside Jan Fenegot. Gaiting. Uh, Fesselik flagged offside.
by Naylor on Osman. Free kick. Next team to visit Almond Vale will be Inverness. Craig Brewster here today to check out the potential opposition. Devenix with the free kick for Gretna. As it fell to Osman, the referee blew for a push on a Celtic defender. Celtic's clean sheet in the first half continues an extraordinary record. They've only conceded twice in the first half of their last 19 SPL games. They haven't led in a single first half goal in 2008 so far in the league. Yeah, statistically, it is the best defence in the SPL. Here's Robson, just couldn't quite get on the flick from McDonald. I think looking at today's game, so far the performance hasn't been great. And try and kill off Gretna. As far as the game's coming up, the massive one's coming up. They'll have to lift the the plate. Just today they are expected to wipe the floor with Gretna. Really. Brandon McGill offside, right in front of the assistant referee. Header, Caldwell. Well, Maynard came to meet it, but the offside flag was up again. This time against McDonald. Link guarding it back for Robson. McGeady, Nakamura, Robson. Oh, he's done really well, Barry Robson. Nakamura at the far post. Header away. I think he was hoping to look up spot Jan Fenegor of Hesling at the back post, not Nakamura. Not much chance of Nakamura winning those types of balls. It was good work though from Robson. That's one thing that Gretna have managed to do today is stop Celtic getting into good wide positions and sending balls in unchallenged. It's one of Celtic's strong points. Ability to defend right from the front as well as Ben Wilkinson showed that. The Celtic players have time to settle on the ball, but McGee's got some space now. And he bypasses Murray. Actually, three Gretna players came together to stop him. He breaks for Baldacino. Devadix. Didn't show too much of it to Hinkle. A Celtic throw. <laughs> McDonald trying to receive the ball on the half turn. 
away by Hall. Wilkinson. McGill. Caldwell. Wanted to play man for Boric. Another example of the nothing next to the bouncing side eye, the penalty area. Here is McGill. Towards Devadix. Russell Caldwell just cleared Baldacino. So that it can build again. Robson. Clever dummy by Vanagorov Hesselink, Nakamura was fouled. Free plays the advantage again with Celtic in possession. Yeah, Celtic fans a little bit infuriated at the time it's taken to get forward at times from Celtic. It's just one pass too many. It's given the chance to cut it out, forces Celtic back again. Venegorov has link now McGeady. Quite uh, quickly enough. Baldacino's got it now for Gretna. Norton. Skelton. It's too high for Devonix. Back for McGill. And Devonix should have scored. Couldn't make the contact that he needed in front of goal and it's a let off for Celtic it's a let off for Celtic and a co complete switch off from Celtic McManus there at fault he doesn't follow never ditch you can see he lets him go he's only five yards out six yards he's got to hit the target Hinkle gets it clear but what a chance gets back to the complacency again 1-0 May not be enough. <laughs> McGeady did well. And so too did Venegor of Hesselink. Here's Brown. And Murray. And it was Baldacino making the deep run that time. Oh, it's good stuff from Gretna. McGill coming inside, floating on with his left foot this time. It's not a bad ball towards the back post. And this was a chance. What a chance. I said I didn't think Gretna would get too many. I certainly didn't expect one as easy as that. Celtic with an hour gone, poised to make their first change. Georgia Samaras with a player that will be on in a moment. On well, the past, Samaras has come on for Scott McDonald. Not for Jan Federer of Hersling. We'll see if that's going to be the same today. Saved by Greg Fleming. 
That was good football. Great interchange of passing between the strikers. Should see Nakamura now. And Fleming and Hall just getting in each other's way for a moment. I think Fleming's been hurt. A collision with his teammate. But what a good save this was. Well, I got fed back from Jan Federoff yesterday to Scott McDonald, and that was a good save. It was the right height, expect him to make it. There was a lot of power in it. But initially, the passing was good. Far more incisive from Celtic this time, and that created the chance. As the ball was lobbed in from Nakamura. Fleming just took a sore one. It's interesting that uh, Samaras will come on, and yet again it will be for Scott McDonald, which leaves the two big guys up front for Celtic, which is slightly strange. Normally you go big guy, little guy, but let's see what he thinks about that. He's not too pleased. He'd have loved to have added to his 26 goals already. Does leave the field as goal scorer and potential match winner. And he didn't pick up the caution. It would have seen him pick up a three-game suspension starting a fortnight today. Samaras on to replace him. Well, he's not happy, but I think also a little bit of Gordon Strachan learning from the Scott Brown booking. They're not taking any risks with his main striker. Good to see though, someone leaving the field, not enjoying that, he wants to stay on, play as much football for Celtic as he can. Donald and the man who's replaced him. He can look really grumpy, can't he? hasn't been picked up by Osman and he's so nearly scored with his first contribution this is what he does well he runs into the space look at the timing of his run he knows Nakamura's going to play it first time he's got two choices here he can try and cut it back towards Jan Fenner of Hesslink or he can go for it himself he made the right choice he just couldn't get on target Baldacino has been involved with most of Greta's positive stuff today. He made the room himself. Cut inside Nakamura. He's trying to loft it over Boric. A difficult thing to do. And Gretna make their first change. Nicky Devidic replaced by Craig Barr. A tech-minded player being replaced by a defender, which I'm sure we'll see Norton push forward into uh, a more advanced position. 1-0 still, I'm pretty sure Devajit Ditch is really missing that golden opportunity to get his side back on level terms. Clear chance, slapped it. Caldwell. Kyle 
Thornton is a player who's shown his versatility this season. He's played at left back, he's played at right back. And now after the introduction of Craig Barr, he's playing pretty much up front alongside Wilkinson. He's blessed with plenty of pace and he'll give the Southern defender something else to think about. Yeah, and he's also played well. Plenty of space. Venegar of Hesseling making the near post run and good defending by Barr. Put it behind for the corner. It's a good move. Well played from Naylor, driving forward, released the pass. It's good defending. McGeady should stop that hitting the first defender, but looks like it's time for Paul Hartley to enter the three. Midway through the second half, still Celtic with the most fragile of leads as Nakamura's ball comes in. And the header from Benagora Fessling off target. Paul Hartley's introduction could well be at the expense of Scott Brown. Is. That would have been the essential two I'd have been tempted to go for before the match. Would have stopped Scott Brown going over the yellow card threshold, but not to be. Samaras putting the pressure on, Barr got it clear, but only as far as Robson. Now Naylor. McGeady, Venegor of Hesling, and there's daylight between the sides now. Relief for Celtic as they double their lead. Oh, I think he's been pretty good today. Talk about leading the line well, and McGeady, again they double up on him, but it's not enough. And just like the first header that set up Scott McDonald, it was difficult. This wasn't easy either, he's fallen back. He just buys himself a yard though, and he's not going to miss from there. And he's led the line so well today. He's been the one that's been played up to. He's been linking up with Scott McDonald. He's given the back four of Gretna a very difficult afternoon. And that's the goal that will kill Gretna off. Yellow card for Abdul Osman for his foul on Barry Robson. Osman's first yellow card of the season. Now McGeady trying to supply again. Another testing ball in which Barr clears. Gordon Strachan just held both his hands out. When Adam McGeady made that cross, he'd been saying to him from the side, nipping his ear, just get down the line, stop coming inside. And that time, that's what he did. He drew them down the line and sent them a great ball. Gordon Strachan looked like he's saying, well, look, it's as simple as that. Here is layoff as Brown goes to the ground, challenged by Baldacino. Samaras, Vanagor of Hesseling, just couldn't turn. It's a good play. That's the thing about Samaras, he's a big striker, but he's mobile, he's quick. He likes to try and play those one-twos. That's probably why 
why he gets the nod up front alongside Jan Federer of Hessling, because even though he is the big guy, he's got plenty of movement. change and Henry Mackinwa is going to come on and he'll replace Ben Wilkinson Wilkinson is well again in just the second senior start of his career son of Howard Wilkinson here to observe today he's of course a former championship winning manager in England uh, Gordon Strachan hoping that this is the victory that be another catalyst for another championship in Scotland. Celtic will make that change in the midfield. It is Scott Brown who's coming off to be replaced by Paul Hartley. Yeah, as you said. Brown off, Hartley on. And Hartley walks it. Central duel. I think would have worked anyhow before the match. Certainly gives Hartley a little bit of time on the field now, which he might get. Great try from McGeady. Well, again, it's Route A, isn't it? Straight up, Samaras. McGeady doing what he should, coming inside on his right foot, can't get it down. Ceremoniously run below the by Paul Murray. McGeady. Try and control. Giddy again. Robson trying to find a way through. It's Reese Maynell with the clearance. Straight to Hartley. Baldacino. Makes a great throw. Well, one good thing apart from the result for Gordon Strachan today to come out of it is that McGeady, an assist, his two strikers have scored yet again. And that's good stuff leading into a busy programme of matches, and big matches as well. Manus with a header away. Skelton. Time is Caldwell who climbs high to clear his lines. And Skelton's foot raised against Nakamura. Next Saturday, Manchester United against Aston Villa on Sir Tandit Sports 1 as the race for the English Premier League comes to a climax. Celtic in action. Of course, against Rangers next weekend, another game you can see right here. And we'll talk about the fixture congestion for Celtic. They've got nine games left after today. Rangers have at least 13. If they beat Partick and Sporting Lisbon in the respective cup competitions, it will be at least 16. I think Rangers have proved so far this season, certainly in the way that Walter Smith has set up his side. He does change it. He's given all the players in the squad time on the pitch and that's going to be vital for him in that busy program we certainly are managing to churn out results no matter what formation no matter what personnel and I think that's something that will stand him in good stead until the end of the season but you never know what's going to happen they're all big games it is a busy program it's certainly the one thing that Celtic are hoping will make them slip up Gary Pendry giving instructions to Evander Snow who will be the 
final Celtic substitute to be introduced very shortly. Naylor. Finding the run forward from McGeady, but it was just too long. Yeah, it was the wrong class, it had to be floated. He drove it through. But McGeady has worked very hard again today. He's had to, he's been right down this side, right next to Gordon Strachan in the, the Celtic bench. Not so on the other side for Nakamura. Very quiet game from him. It has to be a worrying aspect coming up to the Rangers match. Long throw in towards McKinwa. Barry Robson could well be the player who will come off if uh, Evander Snow is introduced. Another like for like substitution. Here's Osman. Well blocked by McManus as he stepped forward from the defensive line. Samaras now. Paul. Miguel. It was a poor touch from Miguel, but he's been one player that has stood out this afternoon for Gretna. He's worked very hard down that right hand side. Put in a few good crosses as well. Put Norton also past marks today. Here is Norton. McGill, back for Kyle Norton again. Good block by, McGannis, uh, by McManus. Yeah, that's what it's about. McManus and Celtic, no. If Gretna can get a goal back now, it just makes it a bit jittery towards the end, and McManus getting out there and throwing himself in front of the ball. Best seed in the house. Samaras trying to bulldoze his way through. Some defence behind that goal, thought that he was unfairly blocked by Skelton. It's one thing that you can't do when you're playing against Samaras, is allow him to drop deep, turn and go at you. Good play by Norton again. Miguel. Manus in the way of a ball that was intended for Baldacino. Back for Brendan McGill. Trying to take on Paul Hartley. It's a Gretna throw. Yeah, those two players have been the pick of the Gretna bunch. McGill, Norton, linking up well on this right hand side. Ten minutes to go, and Celtic will make their third and final change, and it is another straight swap in the midfield with Snow coming off of Robson. <laughs> it's been difficult for Barry Robson. The fact that Gretna have sat so deep today. It's just closed up the space for him. Snow will come on and get 10 minutes or so. Long throw from Barr. Towards McKinwa. And Boric prevents the corner. two goals conceded in the last 11 SPL games for Celtic if they can keep this clean sheet intact for the 10 minutes that remain and another corner themselves as Murray seeking sanctuary in his goalkeeper couldn't find it in swinger and Vanagora Fesselink again came to meet it oh, that's a wicked ball in real pace Carl front post area 
That just had to get a glance on it. But Jan Fenerov has got too much. Brenda will make their final change. It's Ross and Griffiths who's going to come on to replace Brendan McGill. Another good performance by the Irishman and he's replaced by the young Australian on loan from Blackburn. Regular in the Blackburn reserve team before his loan move north. He's played it right back last weekend at Pitodri, but takes up his more customary midfield role today, Griffiths. Gretna played well today though, under the circumstances. It's been difficult to beat. He's also had one or two good chances. Certainly hasn't been a walkover. Strachan will just be happy. Three more points in the bag. And look towards planning how to go about next week, which is huge. Gidi emerging from the skirmish with possession, and he's got Hinkle making a run. Went the other way instead for Samaras, and now gets it back, Aidan McGeady. Osman made sure there was no way through. They might be able to launch a break of their own with Murray. He's asked a lot of Norton. Hesselink have made a run in towards the centre of the six-yard box that time. And again, it was direct from McGeady. The best way for him to play. That has been a difference in McGeady's form this season. An absolute standout for Celtic. It's been because it has been more direct. It's been an end product to his play. Of course, set up that goal for Jan Fenner of Hesselink with a great cross. the tally for the front two for Celtic up to 42 between them this season. And the of Hesseling is going to 16th of the season. He's now got 10 in his last 17 matches in all competitions. Yeah, 34 and 67 games for Celtic. Now that's a good tally for any striker. The goal that took his strike rate to better than one every other game for the club. Importantly, sealing the victory for Celtic and keeping the status quo at the top this weekend. The gap will be back to three points, albeit the Rangers have a game in hand. Here's Nakamura. Samaras finding space. Benegor of Hesselink doing well to turn it wide for Hinkle. Samaras. Skelton taking control in a brave area. Now Naylor. Magidi, 
much more space out wide these days. And a play by Skelton for another corner. Yeah, it's great in a tighter little bit. It's far more difficult to get two players out there to close McGeady down. Gives him an extra yard, and that's why in the last 15 minutes or so there's been more balls going in from this left side. Griffiths with the clearance. Back for McGeady. Samaras, what a good finish that is. 3 0 Celtic. And all three strikers on view for Gordon Strachan to make the day of score. It's a fabulous ball in from McGeady. We just spoke about it. He's given a little bit more room, and that's all he needs. Just the extra yard. He fakes to go right. Left foot. It's a great ball, but I tell you what, Samus has got so much work to do. He guides it in on his left side. And that is a top class finish. And it's not been his only one in a Celtic jersey. It's fantastic for Gordon Strachan. All the strikers scoring. And they're going to have to go up against Davy Weir, Carlos Quaylock. Next week, two good defenders who have proved their salt this season. I'll tell you what. What a battle that's going to be. It's Murray and the Kinwa. He's offside. Samaras has made a big impression since making the move from Manchester City on low to Celtic. That's four goals he's got now. He's only started three games. And all different kinds of goals as well, which is important. Headers, driving, taking on players. Classy finishes, and ones like that, just in around the six-yard box, getting in front of defenders, getting your foot on the ball, just ahead of them. All good stuff. Push on Snow by Osman. The amusement of those on the Gretna bench. And they're taking the free kick. Did it perhaps a little bit too quickly as he tried to pick out Venegor off Hesley. Way by Naylor. That was Griffiths who upended Snow that time. It hasn't been overly convincing from Gordon Strachan's side, but it has been convincing. 3-0, they've deserved to win this match as well. They've limited Gretna to a couple of good chances. They've played that usual style, haven't they? That patient football, as you can see now. Played it through the midfield, moving from side to side. They don't panic, they know they have the quality and can score goals. That's been proved yet again today. Two minutes of time added on. And Samaras has made the run forward. And has suddenly looked for number four. Hinkle. And Benegur of Hesseling might just provide it. What a good save from Fleming. Oh, it's good football again this time from Celtic. Jan Fleminger snuck it at the back post. It's not just a good save, it's a brave save. He puts himself up there. Could have got hurt. Stood strong. He keeps it three. Snow. Again, to Kyle Norton, who clearly has an immense future in the game ahead of him. Osman. Hoping that Skelton would make the run for, and he just caught Hinkle. A yellow card for Gavin Skelton. 
just late contact. You can see there, skeleton right down the back of Hinkle's left Achilles. Hinkle's okay. It is a victory for Celtic. Mick Wadsworth couldn't have asked for more from his side in terms of resilience, but Gordon Strachan's men have kept the status quo intact at the top of the table. They're back within three points. Jan Benegur of Heselink involved in the goals, scoring one. Samras off the bench to score the third for Celtic. But Mick Wadsworth will be delighted with the way that his side played, no doubt about that. And he could have had a chance, did have a chance at 1-0 down to make it all square with about half an hour to go. But Celtic did the job very effectively. Benegor of Heslink found McDonnell, 1-0 just before half-time. McGeady's delightful ball converted well by Benegor of Heslink for 2-0 before the late third was scored by Georgia Samaras with the best finish of the game. Celtic back to winning ways after four without a win, and they still only dropped two points in the SBL in 2008. Full time at Almond Vale, Gretna nil, Celtic three. Gritty Gretna, but Celtic ground them down and moved to within three points of SPL leaders Rangers ahead of next Saturday's Old Farm match. Goals from McDonald, Benegur of Hesselink, and Samaras, 3 0 Celtic, and all the aftermatch reaction coming up.